Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. You are listening to The Brilliant Business Show. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. Conversations with leading experts in business. And today I have an incredible guest, Jose Flores. Jose is an international motivational speaker and our topic today is how to disrupt the average mindset. Jose, welcome to the Brilliance Business Show. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm really looking forward to a conversation with you today, Jose. Before I get started, I'm just going to make a legal disclaimer that Jose is not offering legal advice or legal assistance. So let's get started with the show. Jose, can you share with our listeners a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your business and disrupting the average mindset? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was so for those of you that are listening, I was born with a neuromuscular condition called spinal muscular atrophy. And what that does simply is the older I get, the weaker my muscles get. And the doctor said that by the age of 15, I'd end up in a wheelchair. And they weren't even expecting me to live past my teenage years. Um, but the good news is, is that this year, February 2019, I just celebrated my 42nd birthday, which I'm super excited about. And I also uh, didn't end up in a wheelchair until I was 22 years old. So prior to that, I was still able to walk and move around and, and pretty much do my own thing. And then as I, you know, as I got older I st- and I started really feeling a shifting in my body was like in my later uh, high school years. And uh, after that, that's when I, you know, I moved from New York to Florida. I'm uh, living by Miami, Florida. And uh, shortly after I moved to Miami was when I lost my ability to walk. So things, you know, began, be- began to get more difficult for me, actually very difficult for me because I started to lose mobility and just doing normal basic activities such as getting dressed and, you know, just bending over to tie my shoe or put on a shirt or lift my arms above my head. And as the, as the years went on, I started to get weaker and weaker. And so my body was constantly going through changes, which was causing me to have to constantly learn how to adapt and adjust mentally. Um, not only physically as my body was changing, but also mentally learning how to adapt and adjust every time my body went through a new phase. That's why I coined myself the mindset disruptor because I had to figure things out from doing things the normal way um, to doing them, you know, my own way, figuring out new ways for me to be able to just do basic things like opening up a soda bottle or a can of soda or just little simple things like that, picking things up from the floor and figuring out what I can use you know, to do that. And just like, like I said, just basic daily, you know, just, just basic daily life activities. And, um, as I got older, you know, I worked corporate America for several years, probably more than half my life. And I did that because in my mind, I thought that that was the only thing that I would be good at doing because I didn't have a lot of physical strength. So I figured doing a desk job, you know, answering calls or, you know, putting some data into a computer would be easy for me because I was still able to use my, you know, my hands and my fingers to, to type, you know, to type or pick up a phone call. And I did that for a long time and I moved up, you know, I moved up the corporate ladder in different, in different companies, but I always felt like I was like, at some point I would reach my cap. Like one, one company I worked for for 10 years, another company I worked for for seven years. And it just felt like I was reaching my, my lid. And I felt like I was, um, wasn't able to move forward because of my wheelchair, right, being in a wheelchair. So I thought the stereotype and the stigmatism around the wheelchair had, you know, a lot to do with me not being able to continue climbing that ladder. So I just kind of got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And uh, I said, you know, there has to be more to life than just this. So I figured 
And I was always focusing on the things that I couldn't do and the things that I didn't have because of what this condition was doing to my body. I was losing. I felt like I was losing in life more than I was gaining. And I said, there has to be more to life than just this. So I figured out, I started focusing on the things that I can do. And I said, well, you know what? I still have a voice. I still have my voice and I still have my mind. Let me use that and maximize it to my fullest you know, capabilities. So I went online and I just Googled motivational speaker and a bunch of, a bunch of speakers popped up. But one, one of my favorites that, that really caught my attention um, that resonated with me was uh, the great Les Brown. And I started watching him and listening to all his videos, following him on social media, and just really studying him on stage, on the different stages that he's spoken on, and just really becoming a student of his. And there were some others that I really enjoyed as well, but he was like the main one. And one day he came down to Florida. He was on a tour. He came down to Florida. I wound up, you know, calling out that day from work to go see him. Um, It was a free event, and I was able to go to this event and finally see my mentor, uh, Les Brown, speak in person. I tried to reach him, but I couldn't. But uh, I, I met at that, at that particular event, I met the host of the, of the event who introduced me, who wound up introducing me to the CEO of the company. And he said, hey, I, he- I heard you're an up-and-coming speaker. Um, are you able to come next week? We're on a tour right now, and we're going to be in West Palm Beach, Florida, which is the next county north of where I live. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, sure. And he was like, well, if you can make it, I'll give you 10 minutes to show me what you got. So I was super excited. I had to take another day off of work to go to that event. And, you know, long story short, I wound up catching up with Les Brown again because he was on that tour. I was able to meet him. I gave him my package and, um, and the rest was history. He called me the very next day and we've been, uh, we've been, working on things on on different things ever since that was four years ago. And I I was on tour with him uh, the year before last. Um, I just wrote a book, my new book that I released last year. And uh, he wrote the forward to the book and just amazing things have been happening ever since I changed my mindset from having an average mindset to an extra, to an extraordinary mindset and becoming a mental beast. That is incredible, Jose, really great story and just to recap on everything that you've been saying Jose is you was Mm -hmm. focusing on all the things that were that you couldn't do and then when you started focusing on all the things what you could do things started to change for you and that really is a true example of how mindset makes a massive difference to people's lives you're really creating a great success for yourself and helping so so many people you're working alongside the incredible Les Brown. That must feel so rewarding because with what you have been through, Jose, it could have been so easy for you to have given up, but you didn't. You worked on your mindset and now help others. That must feel so rewarding. It absolutely does. There's no better feeling than that. Number one, it was a dream come true to meet Les Brown. Um, And number two, it was a dream come true to be able to inspire and impact the lives of, you know, thousands upon upon thousands of people. Uh, Given the fact that I thought that I would never be able to do anything great in life because of my situation. So just being able to share the stage with the greats and do what I do now is just an absolutely amazing feeling. And what a gift to give to others the gift of learning them and empowering them to use their mindset in the right way. You are a true example what can be done with the right mental attitude. Jose, can you share with our listeners, who are your customers? Who are your clients? Yes, absolutely. I I work with a lot of entrepreneurs in corporate America corporations, different corporations. Um, They have different uh, offices in different countries sometimes. So we do a lot of corporate training on on mind management, on leadership, on um, 
creating a culture of diversity and inclusion, a culture of winning and indispensable leadership. Do you recall a specific ha-ha moment that led to the launch of your business? Yeah, I remember it was actually when I, uh, when I, was, when I, when I first met Les Brown, shortly after that, he had invited me to one of his trainings that he was having in Orlando, Florida. And in that training, there was about 50 people there. And it was shocking because that was the first time I was in a room literally with, a, with, a, with, a, with several multimillionaires. And it just, again, that shift my mindset to say that, you know, when you work hard and when you put yourself in the right mental state and when you do the right things and you put in the work and you put yourself in, that, in the right environment around the right people, that amazing things can and will happen for you. And at that, and at that training, I remember it was funny because he had a contest. There were, there was 10 tables. I'm sorry, there was five tables and there was 10 people at each table and he had like a little contest. So everybody at the table had three minutes to share their story. And then after everybody shared their story, everyone at that table had had to vote on who they thought on whose story was the most impactful. So I won at my table. And then after, after everyone in the room went around the table and shared their story, the top five people from each table had to go to the front of the room and they had five minutes to share their story in front of the entire room. And then they were going to pick a winner from, from, the, uh, from the five speakers that went to the front. So lo and behold, I, I, I was representing my table and I wound up winning the entire contest unanimously, which was an amazing feeling. It really blew my mind because, you know, I still didn't expect it. I still didn't believe, you know, 100% in myself at that time. And so that right there showed me that I had what it takes to really go to the next level and make an impact. And because we won, uh, the prize was that Les Brown was going to take uh, the winner and their table to dinner, um, which was which was amazing. So. That was that was like a very pivotal aha moment for me in my life. Jose, that is such a nice story. May I ask, did you practice beforehand? Did you know that you would speak for three minutes and five minutes or was it totally unprepared? Yeah, no, it was totally unprepared. They just said, hey, everyone has three minutes. Go ahead and share your story. And and that's what we all did. We didn't know that he was even going to have a contest. That is such a great story, Jose. And it just goes to show if you're in the right room with the right people, opportunities and circumstances can go in your favour. What really motivates you to jump out of bed every single morning? (laughs) That's a great question. I get that question a lot. And to be honest with you, the, the, the reason that I get out of the wheelchair is uh, twofold. One, because um, I, have, I have a wife and two children. And so that, that's my why. That motivates me to get up every single morning because I know that I have a family to take care of and provide and provide for. But number two is also that I know that every time I wake up, there's, uh, there's someone out there that's waiting for me to show up for life so that I can show up in their life and hopefully help them get through whatever they may be going through. So it's twofold. I get up because I'm excited to, 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 you know, to work at doing what I love to do, but also to provide for my family, but also, but also to provide that example for other people that are out there that may not have a coach, that may not have a mentor. Just like I was out there looking for a mentor and I found Les Brown on Instagram, on, on, on YouTube, you know, me showing up for life and being active on social media and going to these different events is this, is, is the same principle that I, you know, every time I don't show up, then I, then I may be missing out on making a, 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 a dramatic change in someone's life. What I like about that, Jose, that it's coming from a place of service and helping others. And also what I really like about that is your why is your family, because it's so easy in today's modern world in, and social media to be so goal orientated 
and it is really so important to spend time with family and loved ones so what i like about your answer there is it comes from a place of service and your why is your family that is great values jose absolutely absolutely i wouldn't have it any other way can you share with our listeners what sets your business apart and what unique need are you filling for your customers and clients? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, what sets me apart, first of all, is that you don't see too many uh, speakers in a wheelchair making massive impact everywhere they go. So that's number one. Plus, it's my personality, my charisma. Um, for those for those people that see me and know me, they'll see, or if they follow me on social media, they always see that I'm always positive, I'm always uplifting, I'm always smiling, uh, which my smile is like my signature. I'm everywhere I go, everyone knows me for my smile, and so those are the, so those are some of the things you know that that make me unique. It's like a package type of deal, and plus just my out, outgoingness and the fact that I don't let my situation or my circumstance define what my future is going to look like. And so those those are just some of the things that set me apart. And what was the second part of that question? I think you answered it quite nicely. I asked, why is your service especially important in today's modern world? Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look around, if you turn on the news or you follow anything, even if you look at social media a lot of times, you just see that we're we're living in a very negative thinking world. A lot of negative things happening. People are depressed. People are killing themselves. And, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a tremendous increase in the suicide rates. Um, I saw a statistic not too long ago that said that there's more people dying from suicide than they are from car accidents, which is a, which is a serious problem. And, uh, you know, people are, uh, there's a lot of bullying going on and there's a lot of people that are walking around depressed and wearing a mask. And so, I come from a place of mind management, right? So I think that with developing the proper mindset and being able to manage the thoughts and the things that are going on in our mind, we can literally help eradicate those type of things. You know, the bullying, the depression, the suicide, um, the stinking thinking, the negative talk, the negative, you know, actions and, and, and things that are going on around us. I think that if we can, if I can help people develop their, their, the proper mindset, right? Cause if you can help someone change their mind, then that person will automatically change their behaviors and their actions. Right? I agree with you it's, totally. It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you totally. What I liked about what you said there, Jose, is you don't you don't let your circumstances define who you are. You really have right. put in the work with mindset, and now you're helping so many people. And like you said. There's so much negativity out there and there's so much badness. And with the right mental attitude, with the right mindset, anything can be achieved. And I'm a big believer in that. And you're a true example of that too, Jose. Can you share more detail on the kinds of services and products you offer? Yes, absolutely. I, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do group coaching. I do keynote speaking um, for several, for a variety of different organizations and institutions. Um, and I also do, uh, I do, I have a, um, a book writing mastermind on, on helping other people to, to become all published authors and best-selling authors and writing their own book and let, letting their story be told. I also help people tell their stories in such a way that compels others to want to know more about them and want to work with them. Now, I would imagine you have all sorts of client success stories. What is one that really stands out in your mind? Well, I remember recently I was in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and I was speaking for uh, a big corporate company there. And they, they, had, they owned one of the largest one of the world's largest call center um, companies and they have call centers all over the world and they contract different clients as well. So I was in a room with some very high level executives from very well-known companies such as Amazon, 
Google, FedEx, uh, South, Southwest Airlines, and um, just these very high, there was like about 70 high level executives in the room. And uh, it was a great time. It was one of my, uh, it was one of my toughest, one of the toughest crowds I, I had to speak in front of because they were all high level, right? So a lot of these guys come into the room thinking that, you know, they're very high level, top notch. And, you know, it was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning, you know, to break that kind of break the ice. But, you know, I bring in some humor and bring in some some good stories. And I, I you know, I was able to break the ice. And by the end of the by the end of the uh, presentation, everyone was, you know, engaging and asking questions. I always do a and a at the end of every uh, of all of my presentations, because I think that that's where a lot of the a lot of the good engagement comes out and comes from. But after that event. You know, there was this one guy that came up to me and he literally started crying as he was sharing what he was going through with, with, with me. And he was going through a tough situation. And it was just amazing to, 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 you know, it's just an amazing feeling going back to, you know, knowing that you're impacting and inspiring people's lives. But this guy came up to me afterwards and he was vulnerable. He was transparent. He was authentic. And he really just started crying and letting, you know, letting me know what he was going through and how one of the stories that I had shared in front of the entire group had impacted him and inspired him to want to change and do more with the situation that he was going through. So it's a very powerful moment. And I, and I get that quite often when I'm speaking in front of, you know, any, any audience really, because just the way of the, just the way that I deliver my presentation and just my authenticity and my transparency, I um, mean, my genuineness, people can, people can feel that I'm, that I come across being a real person, you know, with no fluff. And, and that's one of the things that I, you know, that I learned, I'm like, I'm that, I'm that type of person by nature, but that's one of the secret tips also that Les Brown teaches a lot of his mentees is that when you can touch someone's heart, then you'll develop a lifelong fan. And, you know, we don't do it for the, for, for, for creating fans, but we want to do it for creating change and making impact. And with, with what we do or with what I do in particular, when I'm speaking in front of these large, large corporations is I, the, like I said, the delivery that I come, come across with and the impact, it just, it just, it just, um, what's the word? It's, it, it, it just makes people want to come to me afterwards and want to get to know me and want to share with me and want to open up with me, which is amazing because I love that. I love that, Jose, and you touched on a great point there about how you add humour into your speeches. I feel humour is so important when you are delivering powerful speeches and especially where the mood can come down a little bit on the more um, serious parts of the speech. So it's nice to hear you add some humour into your speech. But what a great yeah. success story. And that must make it so worthwhile when people come up to you afterwards and you really have made a change and an impact to their lives. Absolutely. You know, I remember one time where I was speaking in front of a, a group of college students and there was a young girl there who, again, I shared, you know, I shared my story and I, and I did my presentation and afterwards, you know, there's a lot of people that are introverted or they may be going through something where they don't feel, you know, confident enough to raise their hand and share what they're going through. So a lot of people come up afterwards, right? But this one young girl came up to me and said, she said, you know, I'm, I'm going to college because I want to be a, a neurosurgeon. And I was thinking about giving up and I was thinking about quitting because it's very hard. It's very demanding, you know, high pressure and it's difficult. And I'm thinking about giving up, but because I just heard you share your story about the neurological condition that you're going through, you've motivated me to continue wanting to go forward with, with my, with becoming a neurosurgeon and finishing college and getting her doctorate degree in becoming a neurosurgeon because she said, who knows, maybe I'm the one who will find a cure for what you have. And that, just, and that just touched my heart because I was like, wow, look at this. You never know who you can touch and whose life you can impact on such a high level. 
And, you know, this girl was on the verge of quitting. She was going to throw the towel in and say, hey, you know, I'm going to find a different major. This stuff is too hard. But after hearing my story and all the hardships that I had to go through, and I'm still here pushing and striving and going forward, and here she is dealing with a little bit of stress and some pressure, and she's already wanting to give up. It just changed her mindset and said, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going forward, and I'm, going to, and I'm not going to stop until I win. And that's what she did. That's what she decided to do. And I just thought it was an amazing moment because who knows, maybe in the next couple of years, she will be that person to find a cure for what I have. And it all stemmed from some, some motivational speaker guy came to my school and spoke to me right at the moment where I, where I was feeling vulnerable and wanting to give up. And he just sparked that fire in me again and that passion to continue moving forward. And um, who knows, like I said, maybe she may be the one. That really is a beautiful story, Jose, really life-changing. And I now know why you are called the Mindset Disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> How do clients typically hear about you? And are there certain life moments that usually lead to them seeking you out? Yeah, I get a lot of. I get a lot of feedback and reach and people reaching out to me through social media. I'm very active on social media, particularly on LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, I do, I do other platforms as well, but those are my, those are my two main ones. I, I do also fa Facebook as well um, because now you can just click a button on Instagram and it'll throw it right straight to Facebook automatically. So um, they, they reach out to me a lot through those channels also by word of mouth referrals those are always great as well. I think those are the best types of advertisement is, is word of mouth, free advertisement, right? When people are testifying on your behalf, even when you don't have any idea. So I get a lot of, of business through that as well. And then I also get repeat business because I, I, you know, I bring such a powerful presence that they want to bring me, they want to bring me back over and over and over. You made a great point. There's nothing like good old fashioned word of mouth and referrals. Those are the best ways. And you're very active on social media, inspiring and impacting your audience there. Jose, I find your work fascinating. Is there anything we did not cover that you would like to share? Um, yeah, I would just like to mention that uh... I think I mentioned it previously just a quick just a quick in a quick moment, but I I, I just last year I launched uh my second book, uh, which is called Don't Let Your Struggle Become Your Standard, How to Be Indispensable Even When the Odds Are Stacked Against You. And I believe it's such a it's such it's just such a powerful title. Um and on the cover you see me in a wheelchair, so you see it in big bold letters, Don't Let Your Struggle Become Your Standard how to be indispensable even when the odds are stacked against you. And, and the reason I titled that was because, you know, there's so many people that go through different struggles, different circumstances and situations, and they get paralyzed because of it. And they stay right there. They park, they turn the engine off, and they stay right there and they settle. And I want to let people know that they don't have to do that. They can put the key back in. They can start the car, rev the engine, put that bad boy in drive, and keep moving forward. And I think that just that title alone is just so impactful to people because, as I mentioned, there's so many people out there. For me, you know, my 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 uh, my different ability, I like to call it different ability instead of disability. My different ability is very visible. People can see it. It's not like something I can hide and put away and mask. Um, but there's so many other people that are that that are physically healthy that don't look like they have a disability, but in their minds, they're stuck in their mind. They're paralyzed in their mind. They're in a prison. Right. So for me, I thought that this wheelchair, I was in a prison and I was, and it was like a life sentence for me. And, but again, changing and developing and growing and going through personal development helped me to develop the type of mindset that I currently have. And I'm still, I'm, I'm still growing. I'm, I'm constantly in a state of growth and, but there's some people that don't, and that's where I come in. That's where I want to help make the impact. That's where I want to shift the thinking. That's where I want to, you know, shift the direction that they may be going, and that's where I come and give that little push, like say, hey, come on, let's go. You have what it takes. Let's figure it out. Let's keep moving. And because what happens is, is when you don't, when you don't move and you stay and you, and you let the struggle become your standard, then you get, then you become stagnant. 
and you start to feel stranded and you start to feel stuck. And, and that's why I believe that people uh, need what I have. And that's why it's so powerful because, like I said, we're walking around so many people that are dealing with anxiety, low self-esteem, low confidence, depression, suicidal thoughts, and all these different variables, and it's all in their mind. Now, if I can help them to manage that, how to, how, to, how, how to help them navigate through those things, then they'll be able to come out on the other side stronger, more excited, more rejuvenated, more, 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 more passionate for life. And they'll, they'll start to live the life that they never dreamed that they could live. What a great way to end the show, Jose. And before we finish the show, could you share with our listeners, how can people connect with you? How can people book you if they want you to speak at their event? How can p- potential clients reach out and ask to work with you? Absolutely. Thank you for that opportunity. They can visit my website at Jose Inspires with an S at the end, 360.com. So again, that's Jose Inspires 360.com. All of my information is there, all of my social media, my, all of my different websites, all of the different services and programs I have are there. And my, uh, my manager's phone number is there as well, so you can get in contact with him. So if you're interested in bringing me in to impact and empower your, 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 your audience, uh, I would love to. But they can also follow me on all of my social media, at Jose Inspires. It's my handle across the board on every platform, um, except for LinkedIn. You just have to type in Jose Flores, uh, which is my first name and last name. It's on LinkedIn. But every other platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Everything else is at Jose Inspires. Thank you so much for being on the Brilliance Business Show, Jose. It's my pleasure, Mark. Thank you so much for having. I really appreciate uh, you connecting with me, and I'm just excited to connect with you in general. I've looked into what you're doing as well, and you're doing some phenomenal things. Congratulations on your new book launch as well. Um, I'm super excited for that. I'm going to go ahead and be getting my copy from Amazon. And I just want to thank you again for having me on your show and uh, just help in helping spread such an awareness and, and just having such an empowering show so that your audience can leave knowing that they've received a tremendous amount of value. The pleasure is all mine. And thank you for your kind words. You have been listening to the Brilliance Business Show Today, I've been having a conversation with Jose Flores, international motivational speaker. Her topic has been how to disrupt the average mindset. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.